Hello and welcome back to part two of our Principles of Bookkeeping Controls mock exam walkthrough. Hopefully you found part one useful and hopefully you find part two just as useful. So remember if you do hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more AAT content. Okay, so within this part two, I'll be covering tasks five through to eight. Right, let's swap over to the mock and make a start. Right then, on to task five, which is worth 10 marks, and is about using the journal. This task contains parts A through to C. Mark runs a small ice cream sales business. He has produced accounts using a spreadsheet up until the 1st of January, but now wishes to start using a cloud accounting system. The following items need to be included as opening balances in the new accounting system. So you can see we've got an ice cream van as an asset, some sweets and ice cream as inventory, a bank overdraft and capital. Part A, complete the journal below by entering the opening balance in either the debit or credit column for each item, four marks, one mark for each. Okay then, so we simply need to categorize these, which in part has already been done for you. And it's about knowing what balances you would typically have on each of these items. So we know if we use a system such as Pearls or DeadClick, how to categorize, you know, inventory, purchases, assets, etc., into whichever side they need to be, and those that should typically have a debit balance and those which would typically have a credit balance. Okay, so we'll start from the top. So capital we know typically would have a credit balance. So that would be 12,126 in the credit side. Our assets would be our ice cream van, and we know that an asset typically has a debit balance, so that would be 12,000 in on the debit side. We know that the bank, if it had a positive balance, would usually be on the debit side as an asset. However, because this is a bank overdraft, this is money that the business owes back to the bank account, and therefore that £94 would actually be a liability, and therefore on the credit side, and then inventory would typically be a debit balance as it's an asset. So 220 pounds on the debit side. Okay, fantastic. So scrolling down, Ranveer runs a small accounting practice. He has recorded the following year end journal in his accounting system. So we can see that we've got a journal on the 31st of December, £320 writing off some bad debt. So it states, the receivables ledger control account has a closing balance before processing this journal of £1,367 and it's a debit balance, which we would expect considering that it's an asset, it's money that is owed to the business from its customers. Part B then, after the journal is processed, what will be the revised balance carried down on the receivables ledger control account for one mark? Okay, so if we've got a 1,367 debit balance on our receivables ledger control and we're crediting it for 320 pounds for a bad debt write-off, that would lower the amount that is owed to the business. So it would be a positive balance, an amount owed of 1,367, minus the £320 bad debt write-off. Okay, so it would be 1367 minus 320, which gives you a revised balance of £1,047. Okay, nice and straightforward there. Scrolling down. So the last question then, Arthur employs eight people in his business. At the 31st of March, he needs to prepare a journal to reflect the following information. And we can see we've got gross pay to employees, we've got income tax deducted from gross pay, we've got national insurance contributions deducted from gross pay, so that'll be the employee NI, and then we've got the employer's national insurance. Part C then, complete the journal entries below by entering the amount in either the debit or credit column for each line. So we can see here that we've got the seven codes which will relate to our expenses. So this is the actual cost of employing those employees for the business. So it's the full cost to the business. And that'll be the gross wages and employer NI. If there was any uh, employer pension as well, that would also be a cost to the business. However, 
we don't have that in this particular question. Then our two codes, so our PAYE, national insurance, net wages, these are the liability codes. So these are going to be the amount owed until they're paid, and in which case they would then be reduced. Okay, so what we need to do then is actually determine the amounts that need to go in each box. So remember the seven codes with them being expenses will be debits, the two codes with them being liabilities will be credits. Okay, so let's start with the gross wages then, which it actually gives us here. So 11, 334, we've then got employer NI, which would relate to this bottom one here, employers national insurance contributions. So that's 192. We then have PAYE. So that relates to your income tax deducted from gross pay. So this is the income tax that the employees have paid. So that would be or are due to be paid. Now that is paid across to HMRC by the employer. So obviously as an employee, if you've ever looked at your payslip, you know that that is deducted before um, you receive your net pay. So that would be 658. We then have national insurance, and this would be the employer's national insurance and the employee's national insurance. So it would be 625 plus 192, which gives you 817. So that would be the amount of national insurance that would need to be paid by the employer. And then the last one is your net wages. And to calculate net wages, it's effectively your gross wages and then you would deduct anything that the employee has had to pay out of those wages. So that would be your income tax and it would be the employee's national insurance. So effectively, it would be 11,334 minus the income tax of 658 minus the employee's NI of 625, which gives you a net wages figure of 10,051. Okay, excellent. Right, okay, so that answers task five. Let's now move on to task six. So task six is worth 10 marks and is about using the journal to correct errors. This task contains parts A through to D. Part A, identify the type of error described by each of the following statements by dragging the appropriate option into the space provided. And this is for four marks. So basically all we need to do here is read the statement or read the description and match up the type of error with what it's describing. So the first one then, Harry bought a new laptop for his business using his personal credit card rather than his business account. As it did not come through on the bank feed in his accounting system, he completely forgot to include it in his accounts. Okay, so when we completely miss a transaction from our accounts, that describes an error of omission you're effectively emitting the transaction. So what we need to do, drag that across and drop it in the type of error. So the next one, Tariq quoted a customer 800 pounds. When producing the invoice, he recorded the sale and the receivable as 900 pounds. The customer has challenged the amount owed at the year end. So when we enter in a transaction incorrectly in the first place, that describes an error of original entry. Okay, now I have actually done, I know we're part through this task, but I have actually done a specific video on types of errors that I'll leave a link to in the description of this video. So if it is an area that you struggle with, please do go watch that video. I think that will really help. Okay, the third one, Serena purchased some machinery for long-term use in her furniture repair business. She coded this to repairs instead of assets. Okay. So this one describes an error of principle. And the reason being, it's gone to the wrong type of account. So rather than going to assets, it has gone to an expense account. And when that happens, although they are both debit accounts, i.e. they increase in value with a debit, because it's the wrong type of account, it describes an error of principle. Now the last one, Mamal coded an invoice for his monthly warehouse rental to electricity expenses. Now because both of these relate to expense accounts, or both of these are expense accounts, it would be described as an error of commission. This is where the account types are the same, 
but it's been inputted to the wrong account. So in this example, the rental has gone to the electricity expense. Both of them are expenses, but it's obviously the wrong account. And that describes an error of commission. So let's drag that in. Excellent. Okay, let's scroll down then. A payment was received into the bank account of £303. This was from a credit customer who owed £330, but the bank transfer had been mistyped. As the system could not identify an invoice to allocate the receipt to, it allocated it to the suspense account. This was the only entry in the suspense account at the 30th of June. Part B. Identify the balance on the suspense account in the trial balance by entering an amount in either the debit or credit column below. Okay, so let's break this one down. So a payment's gone into the bank account for £303. The credit customer owed £330. But the bank transfer has been mistyped. So the £330 has been entered in correctly originally. But the payment that's been received has been entered in as £303 rather than £330. So we've got a difference there of £27, that being the difference between your 330 and your 303 So now we need to decide which side of the suspense account will that have been put to. So if we think about a receipt into the bank, that would be recorded on the debit side. Okay, so it should have gone and will have gone because it doesn't say that it's gone to the wrong side. So this £303 has gone onto the debit side of our bank account but it should have been 330. So this is 27 pounds too low. So what we're saying is there is 27 pounds too little on your debits because it's gone in as 303 rather than 330. So as I stated, your debit side will be 27 pounds too low. So what your system would do is create a suspense account to even out our two sides, our debit and credit side and it would therefore put £27 on the debit side to bring this amount up so that both sides then match. So it would give you a £27 balance on your suspense account on the debit side. Okay, brilliant. So moving on. The following errors have been identified when reviewing the year-end accounts of Motortronics Limited. A single payment to a supplier of £750 related to two separate invoices of 320 and 430. As the system was unable to match the payment to a supplier invoice, it was included in the suspense account. An electricity expense of 370 pounds has been coded to the wages and salaries expense account. Part C, show the journal entries required to correct these errors by entering the correct amount in either the debit or credit column for each account. And this is for four marks, so one mark for each. So let's take that first line to start off with. So a single payment to a supplier of 750 pounds, we're basically stating that rather than go to the payable ledger control account, because it couldn't be matched off, and I have my own concerns about that, but anyway, I'm gonna push past them for the purposes of this question. But because it couldn't be matched off, instead it's gone to the suspense account. Okay, so what we're saying is it needs to be entered into the payable ledger control account and removed from the suspense account. So if we think about a payment to a supplier and how that affects our payable ledger control account, bear in mind the payable ledger control is a liability. So a payment would reduce that because we're paying off our liability. So the entry would have been a debit within our payable ledger control. Instead, that's been put to the suspense. So to correct that, we would credit the suspense to remove the 750 and debit the payables ledger control. So let's get that in to start off with. So 750 credit to the suspense, 750 debit to the payables ledger control. So that's corrected that first line. The second line, an electricity expense of 370 pounds has been coded to the wages and salaries expense. So what we would need to do on this one is remove the 370 from wages and salaries and instead enter it into the electricity expense as it should have been. Okay, so all we would therefore do is debit the electricity expense, which is what should have happened in the first place, 
and then to remove it from the wages and salaries expense, we just credit it. Excellent. Right, moving on down then. So Sonia runs a very small business selling garden plants. As she only has a few transactions each month, she has chosen to operate a manual accounting system. A customer paid her £12 directly into her bank account and she recorded this as a debit to the bank of £12 and a debit to the receivables ledger control account for £12. She also debited the individual account in the receivables ledger. Part D, complete the following statement. The amount that will be included in the suspense account is, and then we've got some options. So we've either got £12 credit, £12 debit, £24 credit, £24 debit. Okay, well, let's think about how this should have been recorded in the first place. So it should have been a debit to the bank for £12. That is correct. However, it should have then been a credit to the receivables ledger control account for 12 instead of a debit. Okay, now because this has been entered into the wrong side of the account, it doubles the effect. Okay, so whereas previously, if we just not have entered it at all, it would have created a suspense account for £12. However, because it's been put in on the wrong side, that doubles the effect. So actually, the difference now to be entered into the suspense would be £24 to make sure that it balances. So with that in mind, we know that it's going to be £24. However, we need to think about what side. Well, considering we've had no credit entries, we've only had debit entries, the system would open up a suspense account with a credit balance to make sure those two sides balanced. So it would therefore be a £24 credit. Okay, excellent. And that finishes task six. So let's now move on to task seven. So task seven is worth 10 marks and is about extracting a trial balance. This task contains parts A through to B. Joe has a window fitting business. Most of the ledger accounts have been closed off and included in the trial balance as at the 31st of January. Part A, complete the remaining ledger accounts by inserting the balance carried down on each account. Enter all answers to two decimal places. We've got four marks here, so I'm hoping to see four boxes. We do, we've got four boxes. Okay, so this one's fairly straightforward really. All we're doing is balancing off each account. And to do that, we know that we just need to show the difference between the debit and credit side. It's actually already shown you which side the balance carried down should go on each account. So we don't even have to determine that. It's literally just the difference between the debit side and the credit side. So let's work through each of these and hopefully we won't have any problems. So plant and equipment, so it'd just be 5,000 plus 27,500. So that would be 32,500. It does say enter all answers to two decimal places. So we will put 0 0.00 just to be sure. And that does keep it consistent with what they've done so far as well. Okay, so then the next one, sales returns. So 2,000. 412.00. We then have capital. So on this one, we have a credit to start off with as a balance brought down of 55,000. And we would just deduct to this 17,000 debit to get the difference between our debit and credit side. And that would give you a difference or a balance carried down of 38,000. And then the last one, a oh, few more transactions in this one, is your receivables ledger control account. So all we need to do, add up our debits, then add up our credits, do the difference between the two. And that gives us a balance carried down of £17,851.70. So let's enter that in. So £17,851.70. Brilliant, okay, so nothing too challenging there. Let's have a look at part B. So complete the trial balance by inserting the missing figures and calculating the total for each column. Enter your answers to two decimal places. Okay, so all we're doing is taking our balances from each of these accounts and entering them into the trial balance. 
just remember the balances that we've calculated here are the balances carried down. And within your trial balance, we need to show the balance brought down at the start of the next month. So in which case, we'll start with plant and equipment of 32,500. This would be a debit balance. Oh, we will do it to two decimal places as well, 0 0.00. Our capital, we had 38,000. Receivables ledger control, we had 17,851 pounds and 70 pence. And then the sales returns, we had 2,412. Brilliant, okay, so all we then need to do is calculate our totals by adding up the debit column and adding up the credit column. So our debit column comes to 93,860 pounds and 57 pence. And then our credit column should come to the same amount if we've done this correctly. So add up our credit column, and that does come to £93,860.57. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so that covers task number seven. Let's now look at task eight, which is our last task. So task eight is worth 10 marks, and it's about redrafting a trial balance. The initial list of balances for John's business at the 31st of December is, and we see that we've got sales, wages, irrecoverable debts, rent, cash, and drawings. It then states some year-end errors have been identified and the following journals are required to be processed. So we can see that we've got two parts of this journal. So we've got irrecoverable debts, which has then gone to the suspense account, and we've got a little description here to say irrecoverable debt not initially coded. And then we've got another one for rent where it states rent refund not coded. Now, as we don't have a suspense account balance on here, we can assume that these two transactions will clear the suspense. Okay, if we scroll further down, it states complete the adjusted trial balance by inserting the correct figures in either the debit or credit column and entering totals for each column. And again, on here, we don't have anything for the suspense account, which again leads us to believe that by inputting these two journals, or one journal split into two parts, that it will clear the suspense account. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got. So the two accounts that will be affected by this journal are our irrecoverable debts and our rent account everything else can be entered in without adjustment. Okay, so what I would do, I'll start from the top. Okay, hopefully we know which sides these go on by now. Learning something like pearls or dead click can really help with categorizing these. I do have a video which is titled Learn Double Entry Bookkeeping in Five Minutes, and that gives you a really sharp, straight to the point way of remembering how to categorize accounts. So go watch that if it is something that you are still struggling with. Okay, so taking our first one, which is sales then, so that should be 125,299 pounds and 26 pence, and that should be on the credit side because it's income. Okay, we then have wages, which are an expense, so and therefore should be on the debit side of £92,809.33. We then have irrecoverable debt. So this is the first account which will be affected by our journal. And as irrecoverable debts are an expense, and we are then debiting it for a further £427, that would increase the balance on our irrecoverable debts account. So to get our new balance within the trial balance, it would be £1,604.22, i.e. the existing balance, plus £427. And that gives us a new balance on the account of £2,031.22. 
Okay, we then come to rent, which is our next account that will be affected by the journal. Now rent again is an expense and therefore would have a debit balance. However, we can see within this journal that we actually are crediting the rent account. So we are lowering the balance within the rent account. So to get our new balance, all we would do is take our existing balance of £9,488.32 and take off our credit entry of £1,276.48. And that gives you a new balance on your rent account of £8,211.84. Okay, fantastic. So we then have cash, so no adjustments to cash. We know that cash is an asset and therefore should go on the debit side. So we can enter that in as £3,246.87. We then have drawings. Now drawings are a reduction to our capital. It is where the owners of the business are taking money out of the business for personal use and therefore lowering our capital account. Now our capital is a credit and drawings are a debit to reduce that down. So it would be 19,000 on the debit side. Excellent, right. So now that we've entered in all our balances to the trial balance, we can now total our debit column and total, I mean, we don't need to exactly total our credit column, it's just one balance, um, but let's get that done. So let's add up all our debits first. And by doing that, we get a total of £125,299.26, which we can see equals our credit column, which is a great sign that we've done this correctly. So we can enter in the total on that side too. Okay, and we can now see that both sides match off. Brilliant. Okay. And that does actually finish this task and the end of this mock exam. So hopefully you have found this run through useful. And remember, if you have, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel for more AAT content, whether that be mock exam run throughs or specific topic run throughs as well. Thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.